If you eat meat, especially beef, and you care about climate change, I think you're gonna like this video. The Australian red meat industry is responsible for 11% of the national greenhouse gas emissions, planet warming emissions, such as methane. Methane gas, this planet warming gas, is released as a byproduct of cattle's digestion. Right? Because they are ruminants, and as you know, if you're ruminating over something, you're going over something, mulling over something, all over again. It's a long process. But when you're ruminating, at least you're not releasing methane, but cows, when they ruminate, because they are ruminants, right? They, the digestion takes forever. They go over and over and over. They are, whatever they eat, they the grass most of, most of the time, right? They have few stomachs, not just one, and because this digestion takes so long, they almost constantly belch and fart this methane gas. And that's a big problem, right? Because methane is 26 times more potent, more planet warming than carbon dioxide. But did you know that there is a type of seaweed that when added as a supplement to cattle's feed can reduce that methane generation from their stomach by up to 98%. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Hi, I am Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au. On the screen, you can see my five pillars of sustainability. Okay, look, you've probably heard about methane gas, right? It's one of the most, after carbon dioxide, the second most important and problematic greenhouse gas, right? And yes, it is 26 times more planet warming, more potent, stronger than carbon dioxide, that is true. But at the same time, the good news is that it only lasts for about 10 years up in the atmosphere, whereas carbon dioxide lasts up in the atmosphere for up to 1000 years, right? So uh, some analogy would be the methane is like a sprinter, very fast, but relatively short-lived, with but very strong, like the sprinters, you know, athletic sprinters, they're big, muscly, they have, their thighs are like this thick. Whereas marathon runners, they, they, they go for 40 k's or something, but they're almost like uh, bulimic or anorectic, right? But they go, they, they go slower, but last longer. So it's like carbon dioxide and methane. But anyway, we need to reduce all greenhouse gas emissions, whether it's from methane or from carbon dioxide because of global warming and climate change and all that jazz, which you know probably, but also because Australia has committed, enshrined in law, a national greenhouse gas reduction target of 43% by 2030. And the red meat industry itself they have also committed to carbon neutrality by 2030. So, let me introduce you to Asparagopsis seaweed. This seaweed is a type of red algae with that methane slashing attributes, and this algae is distributed all over the world, including Australia. And that is that algae that CSRAO have demonstrated that can slash 98% of methane emissions. And you only need 1% of that as a portion, proportion in cattle's feed to have that methane reducing uh, effect. Right, so how does it work actually, right? Well, this seaweed produces a bioactive compound called bromoform, which prevents the formation of methane, which is CH4, it's a chemical code for methane, right? By inhibiting a specific enzyme in the gut during the digestion of feed. And now, get this, and by the way, I'm not uh, taking this from someone's blog, I'm quoting CSIRO here, now listen to this. If just 10% of global ruminant producers, that means cattle farmers, adopted future feed, that means that supplement containing this seaweed, as an ingredient to feed their livestock, it would have the same impact as removing 100 million cars from the world's roads. So imagine the implications of this. Taking 100 million cars off the roads, that's the impact that this seaweed could have when added 
as a, as a supplement to the cattle feed. Incredible. Now, although the methane slushing attributes of this seaweed have been known for 10 years, its usage is not yet widely rolled out, widely adopted, not yet, because there are a few question marks surrounding this seaweed. Number one, the big cattle producers, uh, Angus beef and Wagyu and sirloin or ribeye, like uh, all of these brands, and I don't know enough of these brands, because I don't eat meat actually, but that's, that's not the point here. The point is, they are concerned that addition of this supplement, this seaweed supplement, will negatively impact what they call the flavor profile of the meat or taste, right? And this industry, it's a two billion dollar industry in Australia and they're big brands with, you know, massive reputation uh, all over the world, right? Australian beef is widely regarded all around the world, maybe with Argentinian or Brazilian, like I don't know this market very well, but it's it has good reputation and they don't want to mess up with their product by having some taste, seaweed taste, right? So they're a little bit concerned, you know? It's like, think about like McDonald's. They wouldn't just add some new spice on a, because it reduces methane to their Big Mac, which is their signature product, right? They would need to make sure it doesn't impact the taste that people go and buy Big Mac for. The second question mark is, is it going to be profitable? The cattle farmers are not going to take it and adopt it, add it to, their, to the feed of their cows if they're going to lose money. Obviously, right? This is about business. So, if it improves health, for example, of their cows, then they're more likely to adopt this seaweed. Right? Um, there are some studies that are showing early signs are that it actually does improve health of cows. However, this, that research is not yet finished. Right? Well, if they have more healthier cows uh, as a result of adding this supplement, that improves the bottom line because if they have, they don't have to uh, cure or replace or slaughter sick cows. So that's one thing. The other thing is distribution. It costs a lot of money to transport and distribute things around Australia. We're not Netherlands, right? There are some farms the size of Netherlands in Australia, in the middle, in rural Western Australia, in outback Queensland, right? And these distribution channels, these supply chains, they, they're costly. Especially if you want to ship something remotely, sometimes the cost of the of uh, the distribution can be four times the cost of the actual packet, right? So that needs to be considered as well. Now, the other thing, which is not exactly market incentive, but uh, it might make uh, the farmers to adopt, incentivize them to adopt this supplement, uh, would be something like if the European uh, Union uh, decides that they will only import meat from Australia, beef, that has, uh, you know, 20% methane uh, release or it's up to 20% or has some kind of methane neutral or some kind of uh, certification, right? That would be then the market incentive or regulation incentive for the farmers to adopt it. But they need some kind of uh, stimulus for them to take it on board. Otherwise, they will not do it just because of it reduces methane. And the third and final question mark, which is more of my question mark, I haven't found any answers from my research in preparation for this video, is how are they going to get it to their feet if the cows are just freely roaming on these giant cattle stations where they actually must use helicopters to muster them, right? If they have cows in feedlots and they feed them factory farmed, where they add it as a 1% into the giant heap and then distribute it in the troughs when the cows are there, you know, head to head like that eating, that is easy. But if they freely roaming and grazing on these hundreds of hectares, hundreds of kilometers, you know, how are they going to get it to each cow regularly, whether it's daily or weekly, who's going to do it? Are they going to give them some pellets or distribute like salt that contains the seaweed that they lick or I don't know. So my verdict is 
overall that it, this is absolutely fantastic. Namely, no, primarily because it reduces these greenhouse gas emissions, methane, very important, right? But also, it is not some kind of chemical you have to buy and ship and then you in a, in a bottle, but also then give it to cows that might possibly harm them in some other way, right? It's not some kind of antibiotic, uh, so that's fantastic. It is natural, but even better, you don't grow it on land, uh, so you don't have to clear the land, you don't have to uh, fertilize and irrigate the land. It grows in water, which is absolutely amazing. You don't have to do really anything other than harvest it, right? You employ local people because it grows in Australian waters, so absolutely fantastic. On a personal note, this topic until about four or five years ago would have been absolutely uh, diabolical and combustible for me because I, I, I have been now on plant-based diet for seven years and in my first two years I have been quite a radical vegan. I thought that uh, eating any animal product is total evil and everyone should change it and I was a little bit preachy about it but anyway I was new and learning and I didn't know a lot of how to approach these things so that was past now nowadays i would have never said to anyone what they should eat to me this is a personal no-go zone it's something like uh, you know what you eat your choice of intimate partners your sexual orientation your religion this is just way too intimate and personal thing to preach about to someone what they should eat everyone must make their own decisions and so that's one thing. The other thing is meat consumption is going to rise anyway, whatever I think or don't think, especially in developing countries because their incomes are rising. And whether it's in Indonesia, China, India or Nigeria, well, India, they're not going to eat beef, but they'll eat other meat, right? They want to eat more steaks, these people, right? Wagyu sirloin, it's a sign of status. It, uh, the day they want to enjoy the better things in life, right? Whatever I think about it, right? So it's true that in some wealthy pockets or trendy suburbs in Australia and in Western Europe, there are plant-based alternatives to meat. Absolutely, that is palpable, that is obvious. But in general, globally, the consumption of meat is on the rise, right? And that means that the sooner we get this amazing, magical seaweed into the cattle's stomach, uh, the more the better, the sooner the better, the better overall for everyone and the environment. The other thing is that addition of this seaweed can actually help people's psychological makeup, right? And that cognitive landscape reduce the uh, cognitive dissonance and even give social license to the farmers, right? Farmers, cattle farmers improve their social license and even the beef eaters, right? So cattle farmers, uh, well, they industry, livestock industry with a 11% national um, greenhouse gas emissions, it's quite high, right? High greenhouse gas emitting industry. The entire transport industry is 17% in Australia and the entire electricity generation industry is something like 36 or 35%. I can't remember exactly. So livestock industry only with 11% is high emitter. But if they are successful with rollout of this seaweed, well, they'll be actually driving positive change, much more positive change. And maybe they'll be Maybe those who care about climate change, that is to say, right, will be probably, uh, I don't know, uh, going about their life, they may be a bit lighter. Maybe they'll feel like, well, actually, I'm doing better for the environment, you know, if they care about it. So that's the farmers. The meat eaters, beef eaters, who don't want to give up their beef, and fair enough, like, eat what you want, possibly, if they care about climate change, they might feel better about, well, actually, yes, I am big on the environment, but now I eat my beef, I ste my steak that I enjoy, but this beef is 98% less uh, methane gas uh, emitting, and therefore I'm kind of walking the talk, like a personal integrity. At the beginning of this video, I asked you, do you eat meat, especially beef, and do you care about climate change? Well, if you do, are you going to ask 
your supermarket, your butcher, your restaurant, right? A chef or the owner or the farmer, if you buy f uh, meat from, from the farmer directly, are you going to ask them, hey, have you heard about Asparagopsis seaweed? Do you know that it can, it can reduce uh, methane by 98%? Uh, CSIRO have demonstrated, right? Because if you don't, the change, the transition towards methane neutral, possibly, beef is going to be much slower. But the, m the more people ask for this, the more the, the, the restaurants and supermarkets and butchers will ask their producers and that bottom up will drive change. I know it's not always like that. It's, it's never just bottom up. Uh, but it will definitely help, you know, one step at a time. Now, on a completely different note, uh, if you want to grow food, your veggies, your vegetables, I've actually got a brand new sustainable horticulture course of which one part is growing food, but it's just one small part. It's all about how to green up your early childhood service, school and home safely, sustainably and on budget this summer and it's all about planting natives, avoiding poisonous plants and growing food and greening up in, in, in all ways. It's a quite comprehensive course. The link is in the video description. And thanks very much for watching and you have a great day. Bye.